Well, we were talking, Rachel, just before break about C11 and censorship, and it just so happens I have a clip in the House of you talking about that very thing. Let's run this clip right now. is that this government will do all that it can to dodge or deflect questions that it doesn't want to answer. There's nothing conspiratorial about a document that was tabled right here in the House of Commons that shows that this government pressured social media platforms 214 times within 24 months to remove content that it simply found embarrassing or didn't want the public to be aware of. So I'll ask again, why is this question, this government so hell-bent on censoring freedom of speech in the country of Canada? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, it's absolutely preposterous, the suggestion that the Honourable Member is making. Conservatives want to protect the status quo. They don't think that foreign tech giants should stand up for our culture and pay into Canadian culture, but we disagree. We believe tech giants should do more for artists, should do more for creators, more for our local media, and more to protect our children online. We're open to criticism, we're open to for changes, but we're not open to doing nothing, which is what the Conservative Party of Canada suggests. Okay, it's interesting to see there are several companies that said they were actually approached or asked to take down content. Is, did this really happen? And if so, you know, why, why did this happen? Yeah, Dean, I really appreciate the question. I, I mean, in that clip, I'm addressing the fact that there was a document that was tabled. It's official. It's in the House of Commons. It's documented for all time to come um, that shows that, yes, in matter of fact, the government applied pressure 214 times to various social media industries uh, to take down content that the government found to be embarrassing or um, inconvenient for them. 214 times, and that's within a limited period. And, and so if that's the government without this legislation in place, you can only imagine what the government will do now that they actually have the legislative authority to, to throw their weight around and to try to enforce censorship. Um, you know, I, I think there's certain content that they're just simply not wanting Canadians to see. There's certain things that they're not wanting Canadians to be able to access to. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, this is a government that doesn't appreciate accountability. They don't appreciate transparency. They don't want Canadians to be in the know, uh, which which ultimately harms democracy and, and is really, really sad for, for Canadians. The government, I also mentioned when you started that uh, the government also recently passed C-18. Would you tell the, our viewers what C18 is all about? Sure. So C18 has to do with online news. Um, and I would say, you know, it's it's yet another censorship bill. So first the government led out with Bill C11 and then followed it with Bill C18. And so C18, um, you know, they, they tried to put it out there as a bill that was on behalf of uh, local small newspapers. They said that it was going to help save them. Um, but at the end of the day, the Parliamentary Budget Officer actually came back, uh, which I, I'll mention the, the PBO, the Parliamentary Budget Officer, is a complete independent body um, that investigates uh, financial things within the House of Commons. And so it, he did a report and uh, basically said, actually, this bill will benefit um, the CBC and other large media companies or conglomerates to the tune of 75% of the funding. Uh, that leaves a, a very very small fraction of the pie then for all of the independent ethnic or local newspapers or media outlets in this country. So, so ultimately, at the end of the day, what this bill does is, is it was, you know, it's, it's a tactic by which the government is forcing these news businesses to enter into negotiations with platforms and platforms have to agree to then pay in order to carry news links. Now, of course, we know that the Googles of the world, the Meta or Facebooks of the world, um, you know, they're they're then going to enter into these negotiations with the news businesses and determine how much value they would attribute to links to news. And then they're going to have to pay accordingly. That's how this legislation is supposed to work. We only got about a minute left in this segment. So what does this mean for independent media then? And why are the legacy media or the government so concerned? Like, it, it seems to me like this is going to punish the, the smaller independent media. Well, unfortunately, and this is what what I warned the government about, uh, you know, the whole way through. Uh, unfortunately, what ended up happening is is Google and uh, Facebook, or otherwise known as Meta, um, basically what they've said is, look, in order to comply with Bill C eighteen, we're just not going to carry news links anymore. We're not going to enter into negotiations, but we're also not going to we're just not going to carry news links. Um, what that does then is all of those local or independent or ethnic media outlets who depend on Facebook and Google as a vehicle to get the good news out, they no longer have that vehicle, so they're actually starving for attention and there's a good number of them that'll go out of business altogether.